This is question 17 from 2013 AMC 12A. A group of 12 pirates agreed to divide a treasure chest of gold coins among themselves as follows. The case pirate to take a share takes K over 12 of the coins that remain in the chest. Okay, let's stop for a moment and think about what's going on. So we have some amount of coins. Let's call the coins to be X. And the first pirate, first pirate comes along and takes 1 over 12 of how many coins we have. So first pirate is going to come, take away 1 over 12, and you're going to have 11 over 12 of the gold left. Now the second pirate is going to come in and he's going to take 2 over 12 of how much we have and whatever is going to be left is going to remain and third pirate comes in takes away 3 over 12 of what remains and the process is going to continue until the 12th pirate takes away 12 over 12 or the entire thing that's left. So whatever left at the end, 12th pirate is going to take away. Okay, so that's how they are going to distribute it. Let's look at what the question is. The number of coins initially in the chest is the smallest number for which this arrangement will allow each pirate to receive a positive whole number of coins. What do they mean by that? Let's say we have, let's say we have 13 coins to begin with. Let's say we have 13 coins to begin with. How many coins is the first pirate going to take? Well, he's going to take 1 over 12 of 13, or 13 over 12. That's how much first pirate is going to take. But look at this. 13 over 12 is not a positive whole number. So 13 coins is not going to be going to be allowed for this question. How about how about 12 coins? How about how about 12 coins? And you may say, okay, first pirate comes in, takes away 1 over 12 coins, so he's going to take away 1 coin. So how many coin remains? How many coin remains? Well, exactly 11 remains. 12 minus 1 coins remain. Now the second pirate comes in, trying to take away 2 over 12, two over 12 of these coins. So what second pirate takes away, since 11 is not a multiple of 6, this thing is equal to 1, 6, is not going to be a positive whole number. So 12 is not going to work either. And maybe you're figuring out it has to be it has to work for every single pirate. It has to work for every single pirate, every single 12 pirates actually, such that every single one of them receive a whole number. They cannot receive fractional amounts. And it is the smallest number of coins to begin with which satisfy this requirement. So obviously this problem is more complex and we can't just like plug in 12, 24, 36 to predict it. There's like so many possibilities and we are actually going to have to think mathematically instead of guessing and checking. So let's go on. How many coins does the 12 pirate receive under this condition? Interesting question. So let's think about what's happening to the number of coins remaining in the chest as this process continues. So let's say you start with x coins x coins. First pirate comes by, takes away 1 over 12. So now you have 11 over 12 of the coins left in the bag. Second pirate comes in, takes away 2 over 12 of the coins. So you're going to have 10 over 12 of what you had at the beginning when second pirate came. So this process is going to continue. Third pirate comes in, takes away 3 over 12, or reduces the amount by a factor of 9 over 12. And this is going to continue. All the way, all the way to the 11th pirate, which is going to take 11 over 12 or 1 over 12 left, 1 over 12 of the amount left in the bag, and the 12th pirate is going to take over the take over this amount, take over the entire thing. Now, what do we know about this fraction? We know this fraction is the amount 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 12th pirate is going to take away. So we know 12th pirate is going to come in and take away this amount. So we know more things about this amount. This amount has to be a whole number. Okay. So how can you find how can you find some x that satisfy this? Or how can you find the value of the entire expression with smallest value of x that satisfies the constraint of everything being a whole number? And let's think of it like this. Let's think of it like this. We have x times 11 factorial up top. We already, let me let me just rewrite it. 11 times 11 times 
10 times all the way to times 1. And we have, we have 11 12s down below. And for 12, you may know the prime factorization is 2 squared times 3 because 12 is equal to 4 times 3. So down below, we have 2 times 11 or 22 2s and 3 times 1 times 11 or 11 3s. So every single 2s and 3s on top of it has to cancel out with every single one of these 2s and 3s for the entire fraction to be an integer. That's telling you the lowest possible value of x is going to contain how many 2s and how many 3s these to balance this equation out. If, if, if this part contains contains, let's say, it's probably, it's probably wrong, 5 twos, x is going to contain 17 twos. So we have 22 twos up top and there are going to cancel out and you are going to have integer value for the entire thing. So you know, you know every single, two, you know 12 to the 11th is going to cancel out with every single 2s and 3s on the numerator of this fraction. So what's going to be left? What's going to be left? What's going to be left is 3. Oh no, the threes are going to cancel out, my bad. Five is going to be left. And how many fives? Well, one five from five, one five from ten, which is two times five. So two fives are going to be left. One seven is going to be left. One eleven is going to be left. So that's our answer. Our answer is 25 times seven times 11, or uh, two times seven is 14, 175 times 11, or 5, 2, 9, 1, 19, 25 coins at the end. And which one of our answers satisfy that? 19, 25? The answer is D.